God would have me uh, to speak to you from this this morning, and and uh, there's a couple of places I'm going to have to turn, but uh, I've typed a few of them out in order to save from having to turn so many places in the Bible, and and this may be this is probably going to be bigger than I can uh, uh, preach in one message, but uh, it's just been on my heart with the events that we're seeing. And what's been going on here lately on my heart and on my mind. but And I feel compelled to preach it here at the church. But in First John chapter number 2, and beginning in verse number 18, he, uh, we read, the little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lies of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son, the Son, the Son, uh, the Son hath the Father also. And so I'm going to stop reading there. And the thing that we feel like that the Lord would have us to preach to you on this morning, we, we take... From uh, verse number 18, a thought where he said, little children, it is the last time. And certainly because of the events that we've seen in the last few weeks and, and, and the attack that was made on Israel and every time that there's some kind of problem and uh, 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 something going on in the Middle East, it turns our minds and our thoughts to the end times, to the last days and and uh, I've uh, seen on uh, uh, on the internet and, and different things uh, uh, people talking about and wondering if that uh, what's going on now might not be uh, the uh, uh, battle that is recorded in Ezekiel chapter twenty eight and, and twenty nine, and there are those that 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 believe that that is the battle of Armageddon, and I don't believe that it is for one thing. They're talking about it's talking about uh, two different valleys in in Ezekiel uh, uh, thirty eight thirty nine. It it talks about uh, 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 one valley where that they will be buried, so the battle will be close to that, and uh, the battle of Armageddon will occur in the battle in the valley of Megiddo, and those are two different places in Israel. And so I don't I, I personally don't believe that they're the same thing, but there will be, and then, and in, I'm not going to get into it in detail, but there in Ezekiel 38 and 39, there's a coalition that's given, Gog and uh, Magog and, and uh, 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 Persia and Ethiopia and, 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 and Libya and different countries there that are given that it says are, are one day are going to come against Israel, come down from the north and attack the, 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 the nation of Israel. And it tells us that it will happen in the last time. I'm not saying that this is what this is, but beloved friend, we don't know. It could be. And uh, the, uh, here uh, a few weeks ago on the 7th, uh, when uh, uh, Israel was attacked and, and over 1,400 people murdered, and I mean viciously murdered, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the hostages taken and, and several thousand uh, wounded, it seemed like that the whole world, just about it, the majority of the world, got behind Israel and was sympathetic with Israel. But predictably, as we can see, as as, as they uh, uh, began the war with the with Hamas there in the Gaza Strip, we're, we're seeing predictably that the liberals around the world and nations around the world and the Libya, liberal media is turning against Israel. And they are condemning Israel because they're, Israel is trying to do what they're going to have to do and what we as a nation, were we to be attacked like that, what we would do and what every other nation would do to defend their people. And, and for decades, for a long time now, 
They have tried to make peace with these people, and it just isn't possible. And so uh, 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 folks are wondering, as, as, as all of these Arab nations begin uh, to turn, again, uh, to begin to threaten Israel, Iran, and, and, even, and even Russia, and, and, and other nations that are beginning to uh, threaten uh, uh, Israel. And, and uh, 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 right now, there's a convoy that's going from uh, 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 on its way, it's, uh, that is passing uh, through Iraq and going to go through Jordan, and they say that they're going to go into Israel and they're going to hook up with Hamas and they're going to help them to fight against Israel. And folks, this thing right now, the United States has uh, two carrier groups uh, uh, there in in the Middle East, and and uh, uh, France has has, has a, a ship there in the Middle East, and uh, so does England, and China has. Uh, 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 ships in into uh, there into the Middle East, and this thing, beloved, could spin out of control. We don't know, uh, but certainly, my beloved, we can look and we can see uh, about the things that are going on. Uh, that certainly we are uh, in the last days. I don't believe that we can doubt that, as we see, uh, uh, beloved, the wickedness that's going on around us uh, in our nation uh, and around the world, my beloved friend, the things that are being upheld uh, in the day and age that we're living in. Uh, and, and the Bible tells us, beloved, a uh, hey man in Hebrews 9 and 26, he said, Now once uh, in the end of the world hath he, that is Jesus, appeared uh, to put away sin, by the sacrifice of himself. So, beloved, we can realize, beloved, amen, that we have been in the end of the world since Jesus made his way up to Golgotha's rugged brow and there bled and died for us. And if it was the end time then, if it was the end of the world then, how much more here more than 2,000 years later as we see the wickedness and the sin on every hand that's going on around us, beloved, it up. And we can recognize uh, and realize that we are uh, in the last time, my beloved. He said, he tells us here, uh, he said, little children, it is uh, the last time. So we need to recognize uh, and we need to realize that we are living uh, in the end of the world. We're living in the end time. Uh, and I want to tell you this morning, beloved, I don't believe that there's one thing uh, uh, that's yet to be fulfilled uh, uh, that would keep the Lord Jesus Christ from right out on the clouds of glory this morning, um, amen, to catch away his church. Uh, we can examine and we can look uh, at what's contained in the scriptures concerning the end time, uh, and we can know with our surety, my beloved, uh, that we are indeed living uh, in the end time today. Uh, and he tells us, my beloved, uh, in First Timothy 4, verses 1 and 2, uh, he said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly uh, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, uh, uh, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, uh, uh, speaking lies and hypocrisy, uh, having their conscience seared uh, uh, with a hot iron. Beloved, we can recognize uh, and we can realize that we are uh, uh, living in that time. Uh, folk, beloved, in this day and age uh, that we're living in, they can commit violence and they do evil deeds uh, and they live my beloved abominable lifestyles before uh, a holy God and they don't care my beloved friend uh, it don't bother them anymore their conscience uh, has been seared with a hot iron uh, uh, my beloved there are men and women that will stand uh, uh, this morning that are standing right now uh, in pulpits across this land and country uh, and they've got a rainbow flag draped, uh, draped around their neck uh, or hanging from the podium, my beloved, and they're upholding sodomy this morning, and they're laughing in the face of God, and flaunting their sin in the face of God, and they have no shame, and they've lost the ability to, to blush this morning, and my beloved friend, their conscience has been seared with a hot iron. I want to tell you, there was a time, my beloved, that those that were engaged in that lifestyle, that they were ashamed of what they were, and they were ashamed, my beloved, for the world to know what they were. And that's why that they were in the closet, my beloved. But it's not like that anymore, my beloved. Hey, man, they're flaunting their sin before me and before you and before a holy God, and they expect us, my beloved, and they expect 
expect God to accept them like they are uh, and the lifestyle that they live. And I want to tell you, beloved friend, you and I, may have to accept some things, but I'm here to tell you, amen, they'll not get away with it with God. Amen, beloved. God will not overlook sin. Amen. He said, a beloved friend, that the wicked shall be turned into hell and every nation that forgets God. I want to tell you this morning, the Bible said, amen, that God is angry against the wicked every day. There is a penalty this morning and there is a payment that must be paid for sin. And my beloved, God has given men, women, amen, boys and girls, a free will to do what they want to, my beloved beloved friend. He's calling them unto him. He's made a way of escape that they don't have to go up to that awful place that's called hell. He wants to redeem them from their sin and save them from their sin. He loved them so much that he sent his only begotten son to bleed and die for them on the cross of Calvary. But if they insist on going on in their sin and rejecting the God of glory and rejecting what Jesus did for them on the cross of Calvary. Amen. God's going to let them go on and do what they want to this morning. Well, listen, he said, whosoever will, I let him come and take a drink of the water of life freely. But I'm here to tell you this morning, amen, if folk don't want to, amen, they don't have to this morning. Now they can go to hell if they want to, but they do so over all the love of God and the love of Jesus and everything that heaven could do uh, to make a way of escape for them that they don't have to go to that awful place of torment. I'm telling you, folks, we're living in the last days. Well, uh, listen, my beloved, uh, uh, the Bible tells us in First uh, Timothy 4, 1 and 2, he said, Now, amen, the, again, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, uh, amen, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, uh, uh, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared, uh, with the hot iron. I'm here to tell you this morning, uh, uh, my beloved friend, uh, uh, rather than believe, uh, amen, the true word of God, rather believe than believe, uh, amen, the truth of the word of God, rather, my beloved, uh, amen, accepting the old time way uh, and the true way this morning uh, and the good way, uh, uh, my beloved friend, they'll believe a lie and they'll be damned this morning. And they'll choose that rather than receive the truth this morning. And all beloved friend, they're just like... Amen. They're just like the magicians that were there. Amen, my beloved. It, it recorded in, 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 in Exodus 7, 11, and 12. Uh, amen, uh, my beloved, when uh, God, uh, amen, used, uh, uh, used Aaron to throw down his rod. Uh, amen, and that rod became a serpent. Uh, when the Bible said that the magicians of Egypt uh, did the same likewise. Uh, amen, but look, beloved friend, the rod of Aaron, amen, the serpent that had come from the rod of Aaron, Aaron had, had power over their serpents and it had swallowed them up, my beloved friend, and the Bible tells us, amen, in 2 Timothy 3 and 8, he said, now as Jannes and Jambres, that's what he's talking about there, I withstood Moses, so do these also, I resist the truth, I mean, of corrupt minds, amen, reprobate concerning the faith. I'm telling you, we're living in a time and we're living in a day, my beloved friend, when they will not receive truth and they will not receive the, the truth of the word of God, but beloved friend, they'll embrace deception, amen, sooner than they will the truth. What a blessing, daddy. I want to tell you this morning, beloved, and by this we can know that we're in the last times. <laughs> Amen. And Paul wrote that young preacher, Timothy. He said this, no, also, Timothy, 
that in the that in the in, uh, beloved that the time will come uh, that they will not endure sound doctrine uh, but they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears uh, and shall turn their ears away from the truth uh, and be turned into fables uh, folks were seeing the cults my beloved this morning uh, uh, growing by leaps and bounds in this country uh, amen we're seeing the modernistic church uh, amen the truth denying church uh, and my beloved friend the sin in Embracing church, uh, uh, growing by leaps and bounds this morning. Uh, uh, while we see the true church of God, uh, amen, the pillar and ground of the truth, uh, a beloved that embraces the truth uh, and stands on the truth uh, and teaches the truth uh, and preaches the truth, uh, uh, we're seeing it in decline uh, in the day and age that we're living in. Why? Because they will not have the truth this morning. Oh, listen, my beloved friend. Hey, man, you remember Jeremiah told him in his day, he said, stand ye in the way. See and ask for the old paths. Where is the way? And when you find it, I walk therein. But Israel answered and said unto him, we will not I walk therein. I want to tell you that's the shape America and our world is in. They won't have the truth this morning. They don't want the truth this morning. They said, prophesy unto uh, thou unto us smooth things. Things. They don't want anything this morning that's abrasive or that's going to offend. I want to tell you something this morning. Amen. This word of God, my beloved, if you preach it, amen, it's going to be abrasive. And it's going to offend this morning, my beloved. Amen. Because it's going to identify sin. And it's going to point out sin. And it's going to show sinners where they stand in the sight of the holy God. And a lot of them. And the majority of them in this day, they don't like to hear it this morning. And they don't want to hear it, my beloved. Oh, I want to tell you, amen, we're living in the last days. We can look around us and we can see, amen, he said, 2 Timothy 3. And I was going to turn to it, but I'm not going to this morning. 2 Timothy 3, beginning in verse number 1, he said, This know also that in the last days perilous, or that is dangerous times, shall come. Now here, once again, just the other night, we had another shooting. 18 people, I forget how many wounded, killed in Maine. And what is the response of liberals in the media and liberals, uh, my beloved, in, in the uh, in, 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 in government? What is their response? Hey Amen. They want to take away my ability and your ability uh, to defend ourselves and our families uh, and make us, my beloved friend, uh, uh, just as prone uh, and, and just as helpless uh, as the people were in that bowling alley and in that restaurant that night. I want to tell you, folks, we're living in perilous times. We're living in dangerous times. And we know that at least 150 people on the terrorist watch list from Islamist countries have crossed the United States border and been called the, the open border like a sieve that our government right now will not defend and will not shut down and will not protect us, my beloved, by closing that border. We know that at least 150 known people on the terrorist watch list list has been apprehended but how many hundreds and how many thousands have made it through my beloved friend i'm here to tell you we're living in perilous we're living in dangerous times here just maybe three four weeks ago we almost had another church shooting, but it just so happened that the church that that man picked, uh, uh, my beloved, to uh, uh, do his shooting in that morning, uh, it just so happened that they were a large church, uh, and they had a security team, uh, and they had uh, police officers, off-duty police officers that were members of that church, uh, and they saw his behavior, and they realized, uh, and they heard somebody, I saw some of his posts 
on social media threatening to do what he was about to do. And somebody called 911, unlike this last shooting that we had. Once again, in that case, there were people that knew, that heard him make threats, and they didn't tell anybody. They didn't say anything to anybody. And that man already should not have been able to purchase a firearm because of his mental condition, but he was able to get one anyway. But this other church, they caught the man before that he could uh, 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 put his plan into operation. We're living in an evil day, folks. There's people who hate me and they hate you. And we'll get into that just a little bit more here in a moment, Lord willing, if we have time. There's people that hate me and, and they hate you. Why do they hate me? And why do they hate you? Because they hate the name of Christ. Amen. Because they hate God, my beloved. And therefore, they hate God's people, my beloved. Amen. And every time that we come down to the house of God in this evil day we're living in, there is a chance. Amen. It can happen right here. It did a few years ago right here in Tennessee in a country area. It could happen here, my beloved, in the house of God. But we're living in the last days. And I want you to notice what he said in verses 18 and verse 22 and verse 23. Notice what he said, verse number 18. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that the that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. And then we notice in verse number 22, who is he but a liar? Who is a liar? but he that denied that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denied the Father and the Son. Verse 23, whosoever denied the Son, uh, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath uh, the Father also. I want to tell you, beloved friend, yes, there's going to come a day uh, and there's going to come a time that a, a man, uh, an individual, my beloved friend, uh, a man uh, indwelt by Satan will come come on the scene. And my beloved, there is a specific individual that is called the Antichrist that one day I will come on the scene and he will stride in somewhere between now and then. And my beloved friend, the temple will re be rebuilt in Jerusalem and he will stride into the temple and he will take away the daily sacrifice and he will sit upon the throne of God and he will declare that he is God this morning and it's going to come to pass. Amen. But I want to tell you, beloved, right now, there was in John's day and there is right now a spirit of Antichrist in this world. And we've seen it, my beloved friend, and it's in the highest reaches of our government. Amen. It, we, it's come out, my beloved friend, and we know for a fact, amen, that more than one Catholic church, that the FBI sent agents into that church to spy on that church and why? Because they were pro-life and they were conservative. And I want to tell you, if, they, if they're doing it to Catholics, you know they're doing it to Baptists too and other Bible-believing Christians, my beloved friend. And there are those in the government of the United States right now, my beloved friend, as a matter of fact, a man uh, uh, here if you, under the Obama administration, they were uh, marking people and refusing people who were uh, Christian groups and conservative groups uh, and refusing them a tax-free number, a man, and refusing them tax-free status because they were Christian and because they were conservative and because they were pro-life. And the American Center for Law and Justice filed a suit on their behalf and it went all the way to Supreme Court and they won and it's illegal for them to do it. But here just a few weeks ago or maybe just a couple of months ago there was another Christian group that received a letter, and they wouldn't come out and tell them why they denied them. They put, used uh, letter symbols for each reason that they had for denying them. And the American Center uh, for Law and Justice filed a FOIA request. And so they had to release what those letters represented. And it was because that the, the 
uh, uh, the head of that organization was a minister of the gospel. It was because, my beloved friend, that uh, one of the leaders in that association was pro-life. It was because, my beloved, a man that they were Christian and because, my beloved, that they were considered a Republican organization. And there was a couple of other things, too. And, folks, that's the day that we're living in. And I'm here to tell you, it's, it's not happened yet, but it may happen. They may come out after us because my beloved friend that we stand on this book you see if you stand on this book you've got to preach against sodomy Amen. If you stand on this book, my beloved friend, amen, you've got to speak out against the killing of babies, innocent little babies, my beloved. If you stand on this book, my beloved friend, you've got to stand against the mutilization of children. And what a sickening and sorry thing that it is that irregardless of what party they're in, that we have people in our government, government leaders, who are willing to uphold such a thing. And I'm telling you folks, we can know that we're in the last days. And there's a spirit of antichrist that's pervading this land. And what are we seeing in the liberal colleges today? For just three weeks ago, over 1,400, amen, Jews murdered in their sleep, uh, some of them. Amen, some of them burn alive. Uh, some of them, my beloved, tied up uh, and their fingers and their toes cut off before that they either shot them or burned them alive. Women raped. Uh, babies burn alive. Uh, babies beheaded. And what do we see in the liberal universities today? They're standing up. Amen for Hamas, the ones who did it. Amen. And there was some 30 to 40 Americans who died along with those Jews over there in Israel. Well, I want to tell you, beloved friend, we're living in an evil day. And we're living in a day where folk hate God. Amen. And Jewish students in two different universities I just heard about the second one this morning. Had to run and lock themselves in someplace to keep the mob off of them. And thousands in New York City and other places, my beloved, amen, protesting and marching for the killers of the innocent, my beloved, and upholding them and attacking those that dare show up there in opposition to what we're doing. I'm telling you folks, there's a anti-God spirit in this world and in this nation. I want to tell you there's an anti-Christ spirit this morning. I want to tell you if you stand on the word of God this morning, amen. Now if you're a liberal theologian, you belong to a liberal church, you're a liberal so-called minister, and you stand up for sodomy, and you stand up for abortion and all those sort of things, I want to tell you the left in this country will praise you. But if you stand for the word of God, they hate you this morning. And they call you a bigot just because you preach and you teach. And you believe and you stand on the word of God. And I'm here to tell you, folks need to open their eyes. They need to open their eyes and recognize what's going on in this country. And if we're not awful careful, I'm here to tell you, there's a lot in the GOP, my beloved friend, that give lip service to what we believe, amen, and what we stand for. But they get behind the scenes and they go right along with the Democrats, with the liberal crowd. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, 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 I realize and I know that I'm not talking about the rank and file. I'm not talking about regular ordinary people. I'm talking about the people that are in leadership. I want to tell you folks, they're wicked. They're evil this morning. And there's nothing more that you can make of it. For nobody would go along with this thing if they weren't, my beloved. And we got to hold our leaders' feet to the fire. Because if we don't, there's a lot of pressure on them. And then, my beloved friend, amen, not, not all of them are like Donald Trump, amen. They, can't, they don't have the money to run on their own if they want to. 
Amen, and, and a few other, uh, Bloomberg and a few others that have ran that are that are multi-millionaires and billionaires. Uh, the vast majority of them, uh, my beloved, are, 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 are it costs uh, many thousands and thousands of dollars to run for office, and they're beholden to contributions. And big business, my beloved, the corporations, the giant corporations, they rained that money down on them. But it's not without a price. They want them to follow their agenda, not listen to me and you. And somebody said, preacher, you're getting into politics. No, I'm not. I'm getting in the word of God. Amen. You see, my beloved, and I, I steer away from it where there's no crossover. But I'm here to tell you where it crosses over. I am duty bound, and my beloved, to preach the word of God and to point out wickedness and to point out evil wherever it is. And folks, they're wicked in this day and age that we're living in. They kept pushing and they kept fighting. Hey man, till they got Roe v. Wade overturned. But have you heard any of them standing up as they're running for re-election and saying that they're going to fight to get uh, the defense of marriage law passed anymore? No. Hey man, you not from either side of the aisle. Why? Because they just accepted sodomy, open sodomy. My beloved friend and, and this abomination, they just accepted it. And I'm here to tell you, folks, we're going to have to hold their feet to the fire. We're living in, in the last days. We're living in a spirit of antichrist. And if you preach the truth this morning, you're ac accused of hatred. And you're accused of bigotry. I'm here to tell you, I don't preach what I preach because I hate people. I preach what I preach because I love them this morning. I, I know that my nation is headed down the broad road of a man that leads to destruction. I know um, how that the vast majority of the people of this country um, and of this state of Tennessee um, and the state of Virginia, my beloved friend, um, how they are headed down the broad road of uh, how that leads to destruction. And we're going to have to warn them. And God told Ezekiel, and I didn't know I was, I, I, I didn't get anywhere near as far as I thought I was going to, but God told Ezekiel, amen, before he passed judgment on the nation of Israel, he told Ezekiel, he said, I have set you a watchman on the wall, and he said, if you see any man sin, a man of sin, and he repent not, and know that that man shall die for his sin, but if thou warn him, thou hast delivered thy soul. But he said, if thou seest any man commit a sin, and thou warn him not, know that that man shall die for his sin, but his blood shall be required at thy hands. I want to tell you, folks, amen, when we meet out with people in the public, we'd better be careful what we go along with and what we remain silent about because God has set me and he has set you as a watchman upon the wall and we are supposed to warn those that are in sin of what is going to happen to them if they don't turn to God. And if we don't, then we have their blood on my on the, on our hands, and I have asked people who I know are are Christians. I know they're they're fundamental Bible believing Baptists, but yet they'll go down to the pole and they'll pull the lever for a man or a woman that supports sodomy and that supports abortion, and they'll and they'll and 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 they'll say, "Well, it's not me doing it; it's them." I want to tell you, beloved friend, amen, all those, all those years, and it's still happening in some states. It's even happening here, still yet in the state of Tennessee. They've not totally banned it here. Beloved friend, those who refuse to stand, amen, against that and, and facilitate those, amen, who, who, who uh, keep that sort of thing legalized and done, they have the blood of the innocents upon their hands. Somebody said, preacher, that's harsh. I want to tell you sometimes the truth is harsh this morning. Oh, I want to tell you, I don't want the blood of innocence on my hands. 
I don't want the blood of the sinner man on my hands. I, I can think of one right now that I know that I'm going to have to give an account for. My beloved, a, 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 a boy that I went to, high, to school with. And I never once talked to him about the Lord, not one time. And there shortly after high school, he was killed in an accident. And I, I, I want to tell you, it's just every little while I think about that. And I think about that boy. And I liked him. He was a good friend of mine. But, you know, we were having a good time laughing and carrying on and cutting up and just acting silly. And not one time did I speak to him about his soul. And I'm going to, I'm going to answer for that at the Bema seat one day. I know that. But I want to tell you this morning, I don't want anybody's blood on my hands this morning. I don't want a man to stand before God and have the Lord tell me you could have warned them and you didn't this morning. Oh, I want to tell you, beloved friend, amen. He said, and I'm going to come to a close here in just a moment. He said, he, he tells us here in verse number 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. I want to tell you, beloved, amen, we can see in verses 18, 22, and 23, that there is a spirit of Antichrist. I'm going to give you a couple of passages and then I'm going to go on. Amen. You notice here, we, we notice in Saint John, in 2 John 1 and verse number 7. 2 John 1 and verse number 7. Amen. He tells us here, he said, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ. God, uh, that's that's uh, yeah, first, uh, first, that's First John one and seven. I've got the wrong thing marked down here. Amen. Second John one and seven. He said, "Many deceivers are in into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist." I thought about that as they showed uh, video yesterday, and Israel was the Sabbath. And they showed video of thousands and thousands of Jews gathered out together and singing, come, the, come Messiah, come Messiah, come Messiah. And how sad it is that their Messiah came and they refused to recognize him and they fought against him and they are today, my beloved. They speak very ill. And one thing that the rabbis, some of the rabbis teach concerning Jesus, I can't even say from this pulpit. But I will tell you that, uh, I won't tell you what state they say he's in, but some of the rabbis teach that Jesus is in hell right now. They denied their Savior. They refused their Savior. They said, away with him, I crucify him, and we have no king but Caesar. And many, many times as Paul and the others went out to the Gentiles when the Jews, and Paul told them, said, seeing that you've judged yourselves to be not worthy of eternal life, we turn into the Gentiles. And, they, and the Jews followed Paul from place to place and fought against him, and tried to turn the Gentiles against him. And in many cases, they succeeded. And they're fighting against the name of Christ today. They're Antichrist. They're still denying their Savior. Now, there were some, their Messiah, there were some who died among the Jews who were Christians that died. It wasn't just Jews that were killed. On the 7th of October, there were Christians that died. They were Israeli, Jewish Christians, the Messianic, Christian, uh, 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 Messianic Jews. And they were, my beloved Arab Christians, 
And they were American Christians that were murdered that day. And folks, there's a spirit of Antichrist and there's a spirit of hatred in the world for the name of Christ today. Amen. And it'll be right when, when the, the, the actual Antichrist comes. The world will be right to receive him. Amen. First John 4 and 3, he said, Every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist. I talked about the, uh, 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 and I'm getting ready to come to a close here in just a moment. I talked about the cults growing by leaps and bounds, the two biggest ones in this country and pr probably in the world are the Mormons and the Jehovah Witness. I want to tell you, folks, they're denying the Jesus of the Bible. They claim they believe in Jesus, but they believe that he was a created being. And I know, I, I'm not sure about the Seventh-day Adventists. Maybe they do too. Or not Seventh-day Adventists, but uh, the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. Maybe they do too. But I do know that the Mormons believe that Jesus and Lucifer were brothers. <laughs> Folks, they don't believe that Jesus was God when he came to earth. Now, they believe he got elevated because of his holiness and righteousness and because of what he did to God's status. But folks, they don't believe in the Jesus of the Bible. They don't believe in the Jesus I do and that you do. And there are liberal uh, uh, so-called ministers, uh, pastors standing today, and they're preaching the tolerance of sodomy and of abortion and all these many evil things in the name of Jesus. But folks, they don't believe in the Jesus that I do and the Jesus that you do. And they have a spirit of antichrist. They hate the Jesus of the Bible. Amen. Because he condemns their sin and he judges their sin and will judge their sin. And he won't overlook their sin. Now, he'll forgive them if they'll come to him and they'll repent and they'll call upon him and they'll believe upon him. He'll save them. But they've got to turn away from their sin and they love their sin too much. They don't want to turn it away. Amen. They refuse him because, my beloved friend, they, they because of their lust this morning. Amen. And that spirit of Antichrist, it's anything that's opposed to or hatred of the Lord Jesus Christ. John 15, 23 and 24, he said, He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. He said that of the Jews. He spoke that of them. John 15, 8 through 20, I, I, I can't read it all, but I'll give you the first part of it. He said, at, at verse number 8, John 15, verse number 8, he said, If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own, but because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Folks, a lot of times we are, but we, we oughtn't be shocked and we oughtn't be surprised when the world hates us. Remember that Jesus said the disciple is not greater than his Lord. He said, if they've hated me, they're going to hate you. Amen. They're going to hate you. Why? Because you're his and you belong to him. Amen. That's why Satan's working overtime to try to destroy the church right now. I saw a video yesterday, and, and there are those in the United States government who want this in our country. We're a lady who was pro-life. Now, she was standing. They, they've got so, uh, just like uh, 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 here, you have to stay so far away from an entrance to an abortion clinic to protest it. But the woman said she wasn't there to protest anything. She was standing on, across the street, and she was praying. And a female police officer walked up to her and fined her. I don't remember how much it was, pretty big fine. 
she asked her, said, are you here for a protest? She said, no, I'm not protesting anything. I'm just praying. And she was cited. I don't know how much it was, quite a bit of money that she was fined for daring to stand across the street from an abortion clinic and bow her head in public and pray to the Lord. Folks, there's people in our government, I'm telling you, a lot. I, I, most Christians don't believe it. They don't want to believe it. They don't want to accept it. But I'm here to tell you, there are people in our government right now, in power, in Congress, and in uh, the Senate, and in the Biden administration, who want to jail you for daring to speak out against sodomy, to speak out for marriage, to speak out against the mutilation of children. Right now, there's people who want to do that here. And he's dead now. I used to live, there was a member of parliament from Northern Ireland that I used to listen to regularly, good preacher. And uh, he's, I think he's dead and gone now. But on two different occasions, I'm talking about a member of the, of the government of the United Kingdom. He stood up and spoke against abortion publicly and two times that member of parliament was arrested and jailed folks were living in, i mean they're doing it in canada they're, they they want to do it here my beloved and we're going to have to fight against it if we're not careful we're going to lose the liberties that we have and it matters very much a lot of I, and i've had a lot of christians tell me i don't think i would even vote i don't understand that I don't understand that. We have that right in this nation. And folks, not only do we have that right, but since we have that right, we have that obligation to God that with our vote, to the best of our ability, I know they're not going to be just like us, but to the, I mean, you know, a, a fundamental Bible-believing Baptist couldn't get elected dog catcher in this country anymore. Amen. Now, a few Southern Baptists that are willing to compromise on the King James and a few other things, yeah, they'll, they'll get elected to office. But somebody like me, there ain't no way. And somebody like you, there ain't no way. But I'm here to tell you we're under an obligation to fight against wickedness and against evil. And we need to do it with our vote as well. Amen. That's as deep as I'm going to delve into it. But folks, we're living. Right now, in the midst of a spirit of Antichrist, we are living right now in the end times. As I said a moment ago, there's not one thing that I can see in the Word of God that needs to be fulfilled that would keep the Lord Jesus Christ from right now, today, riding out on the clouds of glory and crying out to us, Rise up, my fair one, and my dove, and come away. Thank God. What a blessing this is. I want to tell you, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of this old wicked world. I'm disgusted by what I see around me. And I want to tell you, I'm not just disgusted by what I see around me in the world out there. I'm disgusted by what I'm seeing in churches in this day and age that we're living in. There's not many that are standing for the truth. There's not many, my beloved friend, that's living the life that God told us we're supposed to live. Amen. Oh, I want to tell you, beloved, and most folks just want to go along to get along. But God said, come ye out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And if one that's called a brother walks disorderly, and we're not even to eat with him this morning, we're not to keep company with him. Amen. We're supposed to admonish him. We're supposed to warn him, my beloved, where he's gone wrong. But we're living in a day and an age where people don't want to do that. And that's a sign of the, of the end times. We're living in the end times. I wish my message could have been more upbeat this morning. But I have to preach what the Lord lays on my heart this morning. We need to be warned. And we need to realize we're in the end times. But you know what Jesus said? Amen. We can still ha be happy and we can still have joy. Because you know what Jesus said? He said, when you see all these things come to pass, 
No, that the coming of the Lord had brought nigh, thank God. He said, rejoice and leap for joy for your redemption. Draw it now. What a blessing that is. I don't believe it's going to be long before Jesus comes riding those clouds. And I'm here to tell you, folks, we may live to see the Lord, amen, come riding those clouds of glory with our own natural eyes right before he changes us in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye. What a blessing that is, irregardless. Thank God I'm glad I'm ready this morning. I'm ready to meet him, thank God. And he said to them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin and the salvation. He's coming for us, folks. He's coming to redeem us out of this old wicked world. Our soul's already redeemed. Our spirit's already redeemed. We're just waiting this morning for the redemption of the body. And thank God one day after a while, we're going to get that glorified body. And we're going to be able to give him that perfect praise. Thank God. What a blessing that is. Amen. We hope.